Louise is a great painter. She works in a tradition that's, you know, sort of an American tradition, the tradition of abstract expressionism. She has European influences in her work. Uh, she, her work is very physical, very visceral. You get the sense of the sweep of her body and her arm. Uh, can imagine her painting in her studio. So there's this physicality to it, but there's also a sense of the spiritual. Uh, so it's a very interesting balance, as the one once called it, between gesture and geometry, which I thought was very apt. My mother and my father's sister was, were painters, very serious ones. And so I had that lineage that very few women had. Uh, men had it, that lineage, more, you know, some of them. But, um, and I never thought of being a painter, but it, it just, you know, I think in a way I didn't have a choice. It was just going to happen. The minute I started painting, I thought, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And it didn't take long. 56, 1956, my first painting class. I had a painting class, and I thought, oh, this is what I want. Because before that, the only thing that interested me was playing basketball. Right after graduate school, I packed everything into a U-Haul it, drove right to New York, sold my car to some friends in Philadelphia, moved into Avenue C and 10th Street, which at the time was like murder city. I went to New York because I knew that's where art was. The galleries were there. I knew, I, I, I had assumed I would meet painters, but I didn't really. I was, and I've been a loner, and a loner through most things. Pure, you know, the women's movement was the one time that I was part of something. But after that, after my women's group stopped meeting, I was, went back, I mean, I, I don't really socialize with a lot of artists. My intention always was to not repeat a painting. It was to not repeat aspects of paintings. My intention in painting is to keep discovering and to keep changing. A couple of the paintings I did, everything shifted. This one, you know, there was a freedom in the color that I hadn't felt before. I've introduced yellow and reds, but I've never left them as raw as I did in this painting here. I think about a lot of things, but when the work is up and it's out of my studio, it's a very different experience because it has to do with the public persona and it has to do with more with how it fits into historical framework because that's not what I'm thinking about when I'm working. It's just very private, me and paint and the rectangle. And I think Louise is someone who's very upfront. She's a very straightforward person, and I think she confronts the canvas in the same way. So if there are periods of her life where she's angry, she creates angry paintings. If there are periods of life where she's more ruminative, when she took her trip to Auschwitz and Terezin and visited the the sites of the former concentration camps, she created a very somber series of work called The Remembrance and Renewal Paintings, which are in very subdued tones. When she's in a period where life is good, where she recently married Ingrid Naibo, and they formed such a great partnership, and her life was filled with joy, the paintings become joyful, as in the Venice painting. So you can, has, you can, she, Louise has been telling the story of her work isn't telling the story of her life and her work, but she can get a sense of her emotion and her experiences. And when I came back, I immediately began to work, and, it, and everything felt like Venice. It felt like the water, it felt like, you know, aspects of Titian and Giorgione and the paintings that, that had inspired me, even the architecture, the canals, um, the skies, etc. So I think that really opened up a lot of things. And then a trip to Denmark, which is surrounded by water again, came back. And there was a, uh, a really interesting phenomenon, which is one of the really important painters, or a couple of the really important Danish painters, were women. The traveling is really important. 
I'm doing more and we plan to do more. And I think each time I come back, it infuses my work. So the paintings now are one foot in Venice, one hand in Denmark, and, and then something else which has yet to be determined.